Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, come on, put your hands together in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise in the house. Come on, give God some praise in the house. I wish somebody would make the devil mad in the house. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody make the devil mad in the house. Come on, let's go to the place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. See, I believe when we was at a Braves baseball game, uh, Atlanta Falcon game, or some other game, this place would be, the roof would come off of it. And when I say lift up the name of Jesus, if you know that he's worth the glory and the honor, I want to pray, you ought to open it up, come out, and give him glory. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. He's done too much for you. He's done too much for me. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you know, when that alarm clock that woke you up this morning. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Some of you should have lost your mind. Yes, Lord. But you're still in your right mind. You still got the activity of your limbs. Yes. God has been good. And he is greatly to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah. Some of you may be going through something. I come to tell you, God's going to turn that thing around. It won't always look like this. God's going to turn that thing around. It's not going to turn it around. Praise. Give God an advance. Praise. But God, you want to turn it around. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh God, it's your word that will make the crooked straight. Oh God, right now this morning, God, hallelujah. Fill this place with your glory. Yeah. Oh God, right now we have that you. Oh, look upon yeah. our pastor right now, God. Speak to us, God. Oh, yeah. Give him a word, God, hallelujah, for the people, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh God, hallelujah. There are those, God, that don't know what no way to turn. Oh, yeah. But God, right now, God, breathe on them right now, God. Oh, yeah. Give them your strength, God. Give them direction. Yeah. Oh God, hallelujah. Those on oh there that is in sick and in affliction. God, let them know that you are always there. Yeah, you will give them your strength. Oh, yeah. oh God, hallelujah. We know, God, if you say, rise up, then they shall rise up. Because oh, yeah. you are, hallelujah, king of kings. Oh, yes. You are Lord of lords. Oh God, this morning you are the Lord, hallelujah, that will open every door that is closed. Oh God, hallelujah. And God, we thank you this morning for what you are. We thank you for what you have done. But God, but most of all, we thank you for what you cannot do. God, we thank you because you are a God that cannot lie. You are a God that keeps your promises. You are a God that will wrap your arms all around us. Oh, hallelujah. So God, we magnify you. We lift up your holy name. Hallelujah. And we say hallelujah. And city of cities, for God did not vex them with all adversity. But yea, strong therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah.
the effectual fervent prayer. That's the sincere prayer of those that are righteous. The Bible says it availeth much and has a lot of power. With eyes closed, heads lifted, hearts pounding to receive a word from the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, eternal and everlasting provider of our every need. We thank you for giving us a breath of life this very day. For enabling us, Lord, to have the activities of our limbs to assemble together in person in a sanctuary or virtually yes, through the yes. technology that exists today. Hallelujah. We thank you for every ear that hears the word of God. Yes. For the inspiring lyrics that have come forth yes. to usher us into the presence of worship. We come not for form or fashion, but we come, Lord, to do thy will. Speak a word. Encourage us as we go forward. In Jesus' precious, adorable name, let those that love the Lord say amen. 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 I want to ask you to turn your attention to the book of Galatians written to the church at Galatia. Amen. Chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 4, 5, 9, and 10. Galatians. Chapter 6, verses 4, 5, 9, and 10. Galatians, whether it's in your book, on your iPad, on your service, wherever it is, read along with us. The Bible says, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. Verse 5 says, For every man shall bear his own burdens. Skip down to verse 9. It says, And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially. Somebody say, especially, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Yes, I want to just talk for a few minutes today before we go into our observance of Holy Communion. Amen. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9, our text scripture. It says, Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. From this particular text, amen, I want to speak on the subject that I believe is important in the 21st century in which we live. And that subject is don't give up. Amen. Let me say that again. Don't give up. We're living in a time now where people are just giving up. They're losing hope. The suicide rate is increasing. People are dropping out of school. Why? Because we can't find formula for newborn babies. We can't afford the gas and the diesel that it takes to get around in our cities and across this country. We are afraid to go out and talk to anybody. We are afraid of the pandemic. And, and even as an epidemic, we get to the point now that we just don't know what to do. Amen. I watch the news and read the papers and find out that people have given up on their jobs. They decided I'm better off if I don't have a job. But I'm here to let you know that God is still in control. Yes. And if you just hang in there just a little while longer. Yes. Oh, the Bible says if we don't get weary or don't get weak in doing well, doing the will of God, the scripture says when our season comes, when our season comes, we're going to reap a harvest. How many worshiping God know that God knows the troubles and the trials that we're going through? In our life. He says we are going to reap, but if we don't faint, don't fall out and get rid of God in your life. People are walking away from churches. People are walking away from not just from buildings, but from relationships with God. They, they're just fed up and saying, if God was really righteous, he would let this happen to me. But the word of the Lord says he reigns on the unjust just like it reigns on the just. 
So if we are still in this world, we still in the flesh, we still have to obey the things that are of this land. Yeah. We can blame the politicians, we can blame the governors, the council members, we can blame the president, we can blame the justice department, but I blame nobody but sin and the works of sin. And if God changes his mind, there's nothing they can do about it. Let me just keep going in this scripture. The Bible says that we need to not give up on other people. He says we need to do good to all men and all women. We need to act like we know who Jesus is. We need to live like we know who Jesus is and do good to all people, especially those of the household of faith. How many of us can say, well, I love those that I like. But those that I don't like, I will have nothing to do with them. I will give them 411 call and I will dog them out as if they are totally unsaved, unrighteous, and know my God. The problem is not the person. Yes, sir. The problem is in the individual. We can walk away from God, that doesn't change who we are. We just get worse than we were before. Let us not get weary in well-doing. When I look in the Gospel of Luke, the Bible tells me that there was a woman who was sick for 12 long years. But this woman did not give up during those 12 years. She went to all the doctors and all the physicians and spent all of her money. When you don't give up, you're going to keep on trying and you always have hope. How many today can say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Uh, this woman kept trying to get her body back in shape, trying to get her physical health back in shape. One day she heard that Jesus was in the midst. How many today can know Jesus is still walking the airway? Jesus is still in our society no matter what's going on. She said, if I can just get to Jesus, he's not going to charge me. He's not going to say you don't have insurance. He's not going to say, well, you're not old enough. You're not this ethnic race. But he just, he just said, if I can get to Jesus. When we try to get to Jesus, there are many roadblocks that will make us want to give up. The scripture lets me know when she tried to get to Jesus, there was a crowd around him. There were church folks and disciples around him. They kept saying, get out of the way. Jesus is too important to fool with you. But this woman said, I'm not giving up. I, I'll just crawl down if I have to. And I don't have to hurt him. I don't have to talk to him. If I can just touch the hem of his gun. I mean, to know that God knows the infirmities of our life. That we can just touch him with prayer. Yeah. If we can just touch him with faith. If we can just touch him with fasting. Uh, and don't give up on God. God will not give up on us. Yeah. This woman did not get too close to him. I believe she just stretched out and just touched the hem of his gun. Oh, the Bible says Jesus said somebody touched me. Oh, the disciples said, Master, don't you see the crowd around us? Uh, sure, the people are bumping up against you. Uh, sure, the people are calling on your name. Uh, sure, the people are trying to get something from you. He said, but no, this was a different touch. How many of us try to touch Jesus differently than anybody else? Uh, everybody calls on the name of Jesus, but everybody doesn't touch him with faith. He said, somebody touch him. And the woman he looked down and said, thy faith. Yeah. It wasn't the touch, it was her faith that made her. I didn't have enough faith to say, I refuse to give up. I refuse to turn around. I refuse to have a broken relationship with her. She just touched me. Who touched me? I think God ought to ask some of us today in this house and on this social media job, who's willing to touch me? Who's willing to call on me? I'm talking about with sincerity. Don't just call on me and say, I need something that I want. But if it's not God's will, you're wasting your breath. Yes, yes, yes. The woman with the issue of blood, he told her to be of good cheer. Yes. Be of good comfort. Uh -huh. Thy faith has made me whole. When you don't give up, your faith will work. Yes. When you don't quit 
and walk away from loved ones. Uh, I know the divorce rate in the church society is equal to the divorce rate of those that know not Christ. But we as people of God need to learn how to hold on until our changes come. Uh, I read in the Gospel of John chapter 5, there was a man that was impotent, impotent as I mean. He lay on a mat once a year waiting for the angels to trouble the water. And for 38 long years, he wouldn't give up. He kept waiting. I know the angel is coming to trouble the water. If I can just get there first yes, and touch that water, I shall be made whole. But Jesus Christ came along. I tell you, when Jesus comes, he works a miracle. Jesus asked him, what do you want? God? He said, I want to be made whole, but nobody helps me get to the water. Somebody today is saying, nobody is helping me. Nobody is working with me. Nobody supports me. Well, wait for Jesus. When he comes along, Jesus told the man, you got an excuse. Anybody can make an excuse. I found out excuses are the easiest thing in the world to come up with. When you don't want to do something, you don't have to search long for an excuse. Jesus told this man, get up. Take up your bed and walk. I'm sure he said, but what about the water? Jesus said, I am the living water. I am the light. When I speak it, it has to come to pass. So the Bible said, he told this man, this man rolled up his mat, he got up and walked away. God. 38 years, he didn't give up. He could have said, this is never going to happen. So I quit. I'm just going to ask my friends to take me back home so I can lay down and bed. Don't give up. If nobody helps you, Keep on doing the will of God. Keep on serving. Keep on worshiping. Keep on having a strong relationship with us. We've been doing Bible study for the last three or four weeks. Asking what change do you want? Some of us don't realize we need to make a change. And what change do we need to make has nothing to do with changing our address. Has nothing to do with changing our wardrobe. Has nothing to do with changing our friends. We need to change our relationship with God. How do we change our relationship with God? Number one, through prayer. Number two, through studying the Word of God. If, if you know the Word of God, then you know what God has promised. That's right. The third thing is to accept and become dependent on God. And if He promised it, don't give up. For he will fulfill every promise that he has made. The Bible tells us, brothers, be not weary in well-doing. That's another passage of scripture in 2 Thessalonians. Same as it was in the book of Galatians. Quit being so weak. Quit being so weary. Stop walking away when it gets difficult. How many of us, including myself, have had challenges and I felt like quitting? There was a time in my ministry that I walked away. I said to my companion, I'm not going back there anymore. I spent a month searching churches. I went from here to there and everywhere. But there was something on the inside. Amen. Still burning within my heart. Amen. And I believe that the Spirit of God told me, how are you giving up on me? I purposed in your life a role for you to play. I went back with a seal and, 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 and just a new desire to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Because I got weary. And let's be honest, all of us get weary sometimes. But what we do when we get weary, what we do when we have a challenge, is it's quitting a person our way on until we do what God has told us to do. Amen. I know some folks are sometimes, some people in our life for a season. When that season is over, God says, don't try to make them stay your buddy. Because I got somebody else that will come and fulfill the next phase of your life I have for you. But you can't give up. You have to hold to God's unchanging hand. Romans 8 and 28 says we know all things work together. 
for the good of them that love them. Do you love God? Yeah. Is there anyone under the sound of my voice that love God? He says that everything that happens in your life is working for your good. The bad is working for your good. The, the problems are working for your good. They're just stepping stones. Failures are stepping stones to the next success in your life. If you didn't fail, you would have stopped. But you got to hang in there. Everything works for the good of those that love the Lord to them who are called according to his purpose. When God calls you for a particular purpose, don't quit on his relationship. Don't give up. Ecclesiastes tells us there's a season for everything. A time for every purpose. Under the sun, if God has put a purpose, how many know we were birthed into this world for a purpose? Yes, All of our purposes are different. But we are a cosmic puzzle in God's universe. And when we put those puzzles in the place where we belong, it makes a beautiful picture. It ties the fellowship of one another together. I'm reminded on the day of Pentecost, there were 120 in this upper room, but they didn't have the right puzzle in place. Uh-huh, some were grumbling. I'm sure the first few days, some were saying, what are we doing up here? They wanted to give up. But someone says there's a purpose. But the Bible says on that day, the day of Pentecost, the whole family got together with one purpose and one accord. Church, if the body of Christ could just get together with one purpose, if the individual in church buildings and bodies could get together with one mind, we could take this world, we could take this city, we could change the very nature of our society. There's a season. There is a time. And I'm about to close in Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. The Bible says, Therefore, seeing that we are encompassed by such great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us. What we need to give up on are the things that are contrary to the will of God. Amen. I know it's hard, but sometimes we got to say, Lord, all to thee I surrender. All to thee I freely give. My life is in your hand. Then he goes on to say, let us run this race out with patience. And let us race that is set before us. Whatever God has purposed in your life, walk that path. Do it patiently. Quit trying to make God a microwave. Where I can push the button and I get what I want instantly. God didn't work like that. God wants us not to give up. If you don't believe it, ask John. God had a purpose for John. The children said, oh no, I'm not, I don't like those folks. Those are mean people. They're not going to accept the word of God. So Jonah gave up, decided I'm going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. As he was going, God created such storm that Jonah had to tell those on the ship, throw me overboard. I had a brother in one of my churches and he just was contrary to everything. Wanted to fuss with everybody. So he decided he went to three, four different churches. And do you know every one of those pastors sent him back home? <laughs> every one of them, he came back and said, well, he told me to go back home. The problem wasn't the congregation, the problem, but he wanted to give up and do what he wanted to do. But Jonah was put into the belly of a big fish. We call it a whale. And God let him stay there three days until he found out that I need to do what God said. Amen. Amen. And then that fish spewed Jonah up on the coast and what it should have taken him three days to do. Ah, Jonah God. ran so fast to fulfill ah, the purpose of God. He went there and that whole city was saved. Yeah. So you don't give up on your neighbors, on your family members. You can pray that God will do miracles in your house and in your home. I want to close with the words that were written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse number 31. It says, they that wait, somebody say, I gotta wait. They that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. Oh, I gave up. I got a little weak, but if I just wait on the Lord, I'm going to get that strength back. They shall run and not be weary. Amen. They shall mount up with wings of eagles and not be weary. Church, I want to close by saying this is not the time for giving up. It's time for being strong. All of us have to pay that expensive gas. Every day, you ride by the gas station on Wednesday. If you stay there long enough, you can watch the prices change. <laughs> and I say to myself, that gas that's in that barrel on the ground had changed. What you paid for is the same thing today as it was yesterday. But they bump it up 10 or 15 cents. These CEOs and presidents of these major companies, they're making millions of dollars in profit while we, the little people, are struggling. But we don't need to give up. I can't, I, I, I can't cause, it costs too much. But don't let there be a special event for my children. Don't let me want to go to a ball game. Don't let me want to go to a family reunion. I don't care what it costs. I'm going to get in my car and I'm going. But we give up on things that are associated with our relationship with God. That's my prime message that God has given me today is don't give up on him. Don't give up on your relationship with God. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, how many know your season's come? Amen. My season is coming. I don't know where and I don't know how. But if I wait on the Lord, he promised never to leave me. God promised never to forsake me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, would you bow your heads with us? If there's one in our midst today, one that desires a closer walk with God. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm not saying yes. my life to Christ. But God has allowed me to turn to this social media today to hear these words. Don't give up on him. You'd like to become associated with this ministry? This is your opportunity to say, Lord, I just want to get closer to you. If there's one in this sanctuary that desires to be buried in the watery grave of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to just stand where you are. You can come to this altar. One that desires prayer. We don't have to congregate. But if you just slide your hand into the answer, Lord, I'm waiting on you. And I need you to work a miracle in my life. I need you to move in my family. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Satan, we rebuke you right now. We claim the victory. Yes. Those that have walked away, those, Lord, that have turned so far from you, they're worse off now than before they gave their life to you. The prophet Isaiah told me that you stand with outstretched arms. You're waiting like the father of the prodigal son. Come home. And I will give you the best feast. I will put the best robe on you. I will dress you and love you like never before. Because I am a forgiving father. And I'm a forgiving God. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you love the Lord, I just want you to whisper a prayer to him. Ask him for the very desire of his heart in your life. We need to meditate on the goodness of the Lord. We're about to go off of the social media. We're going to go into the observance of Holy Communion. Let us prepare ourselves, consecrate your hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Young man, come. We're going off of social media. In the name of Jesus. We love you today, Lord. 